So in this video, I'm going to give you the latest update in the Mike Bickle IHOP scandal, as well as some thoughts on Mike's teaching and the prophetic history at IHOP, as well as highlighting an emerging hero who has come forward in all of this. But let me say this. Generally speaking, we are seeing right now that God is cleaning house. And recently, we have seen other high-profile ministries in the news, such as T.D. Jakes and T.B. Joshua. I'm not going to comment on them now. But as far as this emerging hero, the best leaders usually come forward in moments of crisis. Think about Winston Churchill during World War II. When everything is going well, anyone could look good as a leader. But a legit crisis shows who the real leaders are. And that person is Joel Richardson with FAI Studios. We're going to take a look at one of Joel's recent posts, which I think just nails it on the matter. So this is Joel's recent Twitter post, and this just totally is just right on target. He says this, A man was on a journey from Jerusalem. He was robbed, beaten, and left for dead. The priest heard about this. After considering the best response, he decided it was best to knock us up and just pray. Surely the Lord would honor him for such a godly response, he thought to himself. And so Joel is being sarcastic. He's using a, one of Jesus' most famous parables here to illustrate a point. And then he goes down on the page and he says, here it is. I fixed it for you. Mike Bickle confessed to having moral failures. The executive leader team said they found enough evidence to permanently separate from him. And despite this, there are still people who are defending him and hoping that he is innocent. Joel just nailed it on the head. Now, we're going to take a look at some of his posts later on, which gets to the heart of the issue in their third party investigation. But first, let me give you some of the facts. So if you're following the Mike Bickle IHOP scandal, IHOP announced two weeks ago that they have permanently cut ties with Mike Bickle due to new allegations coming against him. This most likely means that there is more than one woman coming forward with claims of sexual clergy abuse. In the aftermath of this, their executive director, Stuart Greeds, has resigned. As far as we know, he didn't give any explanation for doing so. And then another member of the executive team, Dave Slyker, resigned. There is no doubt in my mind that these resignations needed to happen for IC to have any chance at a future because they needed to permanently distance themselves from Mike and Mike raised up a lot of these leaders. The whole situation was v handled very poorly from the beginning on all sides, but I must admit that it's a difficult situation. But I am not someone who hates Mike Bickle or IHOP. Actually, it's the complete opposite. I love IHOP and want to see 24-7 worship continue if it's appropriate. This grieves me personally, since I supported a missionary down there who was a musician, and I have watched the prayer room now for years to remind me to stay in the spirit of prayer and worship all throughout my day. And also for the great Bible teachings of Mike Bickle on the end times. Now, let me state this clearly, okay? I think what Mike did was totally wrong, and he should have been removed from ministry for a very long time. But if we could, for a, se for a minute, separate his Bible teaching and talk about that. Now, many people have stated in the comments of my videos that they think Mike is a false teacher, a false prophet, part of the NAR movement, and that the prophetic history of IHOP is suspect. So let's talk about that for a minute. But it should be noted that in recent years, like the last 10 years, IHOP had moved away from anything prophetic or supernatural. Mike, for the most part, was just teaching straight out of the Bible. But ministries that you get in trouble are the following. These type of ministries bring a lot of controversy. Always. Prophetic ministry, deliverance ministry, and end times ministries. You will always have controversy in those type of ministries. And you're never going to please any all of the folks involved. So there's just going to be a lot of speculation and things. And plus, I'm going to suggest the enemy is going to come against those type ministries. Mike was in two or three of those, being the prophetic ministry and end times ministry. 
so that a lot of speculation is going to come in his direction. But I must state this, other than his encounter with the angel Gabriel, which I don't bear witness to personally, and some of the prophetic history of IHOP. Now, I know Paul Kane and Bob Jones are controversial figures. I'm not a fan of either one of them personally. And I'm going to do videos on both of those men in the future. But I will say this, God used them at times. R.T. Kendall, on his recent book called Prophetic Integrity, said that Paul Kane which was one of his good friends, he named his time with Paul Kane as the following. He called it the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay? So R.T. Kendall was admitting that it was a pretty choppy relationship. But he did state that Paul was highly accurate at times and had legitimate prophecies that came to pass. But there were some prophecies that did not come true. But I must state that IHOP's prophetic history should look close, closer at, but there were definitely two, some prophecies that did come to pass. I find Mike Bickle to have pretty decent theology and orthodox practices for the most part. But let's compare Mike to some of the other main leaders in the charismatic movement today. Todd White and Bill Johnson being two very big time Bible teachers. And I'll say this, as somebody who's like a preacher's preacher, I watch preaching, it's like a hobby of mine. I listen to hundreds, even thousands of sermons, and have my own library of hundreds of preaching from all around the world. Mike Bickle is a far better teacher than those guys, by far, and it isn't even close. Mike had much better theology. IHOP seemed to have a better culture than those places. And as far as the spiritual practices... I feel like IHOP had better practices as well. They stuck to the basics, prayer, worship, fasting, etc. And if people start doing flaky things, like they often do in the charismatic world, IHOP would shut them down immediately. They didn't let any of the fakery go on. And this is necessary, unfortunately. Otherwise, you get things, charismatic things that are flaky, like gold dust, Prophetic Uno cards, Christian tarot cards, and grave soaking. Things that are totally ridiculous and should have been shut down immediately, but weren't in other charismatic cultures. Mike Bickle's behavior should be condemned, and Mike should be removed from ministry. At the same time, I think he was a very good Bible teacher, especially in recent years. Although some things that happen in IHOP's early history need to be looked at much more clearly, particularly the prophetic history. But now let's switch focus to Joel Richardson for a minute. In my opinion, he is the bright point in this whole terrible scandal. We are seeing a great leader emerge from the shadows. We are living in a time when nice and kind Bible teachers are good, but we need leaders who are going to be bold. We need leaders now more than ever who are going to be willing to confront evil, that leaders that are going to be able to speak out, leaders that are going to be able to say, this is wrong and I'm taking a stand, and, and, they, and Bible teachers that are going to address things in the Christian culture that need to be addressed. We need people that will operate a bit of like the Old Testament prophets. They didn't always have a positive message. We need Jehus in this hour who will do the unpleasant work of going head-to-head -head with demonic forces and slaying them. I want my preachers to be kind. But I want to know that they can go to war if they have to. And we see this in King David. He was a man after God's own heart. But when I took a tour to Israel, the guide who was a historian said, you guys and you Christians don't understand just how much of a killer David was. David was an assassin, and if you were in David's presence and blink wrong, you could lose your life at the snap of a finger. David was a man after God's own heart. He sung worship songs and praised the Lord and wrote the Psalms, but he was a killer. And we need people that have that dual dichotomy of the lion and the lamb. David killed a lot of people, and he fought a lot of battles. And this is Joel. 
he's fighting the battles. He's speaking up about this IHOP situation. And in my opinion, he's a dual threat because he's a great Bible teacher, particularly on the end times. If you don't follow Joel Richardson's ministry, I suggest that you follow him on YouTube and Twitter and follow FAI Studios. I believe his ministry is going to explode in the days ahead. And he goes much deeper scholastically than a majority of the end times teachers. Like I've stated in my videos before, charismatic preachers are usually the worst theologically. I'm going to state this again. There's a big megachurch in my area, and the pastor supposedly went for theological training. He went to a crash course, three-month Bible training, where they take you through the whole Bible in three months. And I'm just sitting there shaking my head like, what? What Bible school can you go to that goes through the whole entire Bible in three months? It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. In years gone by, most in mainline denominations, a preacher needed a seminary degree, which is three years full-time just studying the Word. Charismatic preachers are the worst, and their theology is terrible. But Joel goes deep and pays careful attention to all the details. He doesn't use a surface-level reading of Scripture. Like I said, one of my hobbies is listening to preaching, and I've listened to the best of the best, and I put Joel up there as one of the best end times teachers right now. But another great thing about Joel is FAI, FAI Studios, which it's missioned focus, especially focusing on missions in the 1040 window. There are 2 billion people in the 1040 window, which are usually Arab and Asian nation that have never heard the gospel. And if you are a Christian who has resources, you want to support missions in this area before you support anything else. Forget about TBN and CBN. They don't need your money. This area in the 1040 window needs your money. Joel should be commended because most of the majority of the ministries today have been absolutely silent in addressing the IHOP situation. And you should say to them, shame on you. Shame on you for not talking about this. Shame on you for pretending that this isn't happening. They don't want to touch this situation with a hundred foot pole. Why? It's not good for business. But Joel has stuck his neck out and he risks his own ministry and his reputation to be someone who is addressing this issue head on. Often, we don't like to talk about the Jesus who flipped tables in the temple and drove people out with whips, because he knew if he didn't, they would block people from getting to God. And there are times when we need to be like this, or be like Nehemiah, who handed out a few beatings in his day while repairing the wall of Jerusalem. But this righteous anger is needed at times. It's absolutely needed in the church, especially the demonic forces that we're facing in this generation. It's unprecedented. Like the Pope saying that he's blessing, you know, the LGTV community, and they're now giving blessings to that community. And it's just straight up apostasy. Martin Luther King Jr. said this, human progress never rolls on the wheels of inevitability. It must come through tireless effort of men willing to be co-workers with God. And without this hard work, time itself only becomes an ally of the forces of social stagnation. We must use time creatively in the knowledge that the time is always right to do right. Great words by Martin Luther King Jr. We are co-laborers from God and we have a job to do and God has a job to do. We shouldn't try to do his, and he's not going to do ours. But we must work to see the ministry advanced, and we must be co-laborers with God. Because things are not going to straighten out in the church just by themselves. The things we don't want to talk about are usually the things that we most, most need to talk about. Churches these days should be having open dialogue on the LGTV issue. And who is doing this? Nobody, except the churches that are on the other side, welcoming everybody. It's total craziness. Now, before we get started, I must state something about the IHOP KC situation. So they pick a new leader to lead IHOP, and they decide to pick a former military general 
to lead in General Fuller? Am I missing something? You have a very sensitive situation where there's a lot of hurt people and they thought a military general was the one to do this job? I'm just puzzled at the moment. But uh, let's just give this guy the benefit of the doubt and just see how this plays out. But at first glance, a military general to deal with a sensitive situation, it just seems like a terrible move. I just, ugh, I, I just, I don't even know what to say. But yeah, we're going to take a look at some of Joel's most recent comments on the matter. He's been um, one of the most vocal people about this IHOP situation on Twitter. I think he has around 25,000 followers on Twitter. He has quite a bit of a following. And we're going to take a look at some of his posts right here. But he posted something and uh, that, that needs to be said about the recent goings on at IHOP KC. So he says this at the top of the page here. Imagine for the moment being a victim of Mike Bickle at IHOP KC. Now imagine seeing respected Christian leaders calling out for others to wait for the results of the investigation carried out by a law firm that openly brags about protecting organizations from sexual abuse allegations. So Joel is speaking out and saying like basically, hey, everybody's saying, wait, wait, wait. And Joel's saying, well, what if you were one of the victims? Would you want to see <laughs> an investigation? You would want to see justice. Now let's go to Joel's two. He's got a whole string of posts here. Imagine these Christian leaders legitimizing an investigation that was chosen without ever consulted you or any of the advocates. How this would not make anyone feel utterly disregarded and insulted. Okay, so it should be noted that IHOP KC decided to use a law firm Michael Brown initially recommended they not use a law firm, they use a ministry, and they decided to use a law firm to conduct this investigation without consulting with the victims or the advocate team. And then when the advocate team said they won't work with them, they continued to use this law firm anyway. Okay, let's go to Joel's third post. Until IHOP does the right thing and hires a real third-party investigation firm, that is agreed upon by the victims and the advocate, they are stubbornly staying on the road that will only lead to the total demise of IHOP KC. This is so simple, right? So I stated in one of my former videos and people threw a hissy fit and I said, man, as I was praying and think about this situation, God gave me Ichabod and I wasn't pronouncing Ichabod on them. God would. And I prayed that God would if they continued to cover up and stall and delay this investigation. And Stewart and Dave Slyka resigned and they needed to. Because if not, Ichabod was coming down on them. And if this ministry continues, like Joel was saying, stubbornly, stubbornly, without consultation of every, all the parties involved, continues to go forward on this matter. God is going to bring an end to this ministry. And he is going to bring Ichabod down on this ministry. And they can survive. They can have a bright future. I hope that some form of this emerges with new leadership. But if they continue to do things like this, it's going to be the end of this ministry. So Joel says here in the fourth post by stubbornly refusing to budge on their positions they are refusing to hire a legitimate third party firm ihop continues to insult and even abuse victims they are holding the community captive on a plane that is no seat dividing heading straight to the ground i'm sorry to the plane that is no diving heading straight to the ground the fifth post, Satan wants IHOP to completely shut down. So as long as General Fuller and Eric Voltz stubbornly maintain their current cruel course of action, they are Satan's willing vessels in its destruction. Number six, he who is repeatedly rebuked and hardens his neck will be destroyed suddenly beyond remedy. Proverbs 29 verse one. So basically... Yeah, so Joel's comments here, 
was just scorching red hot, and I feel that they're appropriate. Um, usual circumstances wouldn't call for this type of tone. But when you have a situation where many people have been victims of sexually abuse, you do need to come at the matter with a lot more intensity. And so it seems like IHOP and General Fuller and Eric Volts are continuing to go down the wrong road to not bring in a legitimate third party investigation that is done by a ministry and not by a law firm. They're continuing to go forward down this course without consultation with the victims and with the advocate group. And if they continue to go down this course, God is going to bring an end to this whole entire ministry for sure. I agree with Joel wholeheartedly on this. Stop the nonsense. Stop it. You guys have already, IHOP has already admitted to a ton of guilt in this situation. Mike has admitted by Stuart and Dave stepping down there to some degree, admitting guilt that they didn't handle this correctly. And then they're still choosing, choosing to go down this stubborn path of, that will bring IHOP's destruction. So guys, reverse course. Reverse course immediately. And, and, and begin to bring in the advocate teams and the victims to pick out a ministry that will, that will come in and do this investigation. Again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving legal advice. You should see an attorney if you want to do that. This is just my opinion. But Joel seems to follow me on this too. You know, um, I will say this is that um, out of all the leaders at IHOP, and I took a lot of flack for this, um, and I'm going to do a whole video on this soon. But um, before this all started, I feel that God was beginning to show me that Isaac Bennett, who is one of the executive leaders there, is a good man who has a good heart, and God has a wonderful future for him as a pastor in ministry. And I feel that he is one of the main leaders that will emerge in all of this and will lead in the days ahead and hopefully lead IHOP or another ministry in a really powerful way. Okay. And I really feel that. And a lot of people are like, no, let's fire everybody. Let's cancel everybody. And I don't want to do that. I want to rightfully divide and take each person in that ministry on a case to case basis. Isaac Bennett does not hold the level of responsibility that the other executive leaders did. How do I know? Because I've been the young guy on a ministry team. I've been the young guy on the executive team. People do not listen to you the same as someone that's 50, 60 years old. They just don't. Sure, you have a voice, you can say things, but when you're one of the younger people on the executive team, you don't have the same weight as everybody else does. So people have been saying, no, Isaac's guilty. He needs to go to. I totally disagree. I'm just telling you what I feel the Lord is showing me uh, to the best of my ability. I got some confirmation by speaking with other people on the matter to people that are at IHOP and people had confirmed what I felt that IHOP is in good hands with a man like Isaac Bennett. He has a good heart. He has a sure calling in God. And um, his wife is one of the singers, too, at the IHOP prayer room. And, you know, I judge a man based on their wife. And I think that's the most important measure of judging any man. He seems to have a wife, too. I've you know, watched her for hours and hours on the prayer room. And she's really dedicated minister, worship minister there at IHOP. And um, I feel like he's got the right wife, too, as well. And that's probably even more important than even Isaac himself. Because having two sisters that husbands are in the ministry, in many ways, uh, the wife is the backbone of the family in many ways. So I just feel like Isaac has a bright future. If IHOP closes, maybe he can go on and start his own ministry. But I just really see a heart after God. And I just want to appeal to people to at least consider what I'm saying. Although most people on social media are telling me that I'm wrong and that uh, they want to see Isaac, you know, gone too. But I'm just telling you what I feel like the Lord is showing me. So thank you for listening today. I pray that you would be blessed. Thank you for watching.